We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Beis Amid Aleph and Maseches Kiddushin. This is Kiddushin Daf 32a. The Gemara asks Mishel Mi from whose money? Rashi says Mishel Mi Ma'achilo Ma'ashkeo Ma'chavda. When a son is honoring his father, he's giving him he's giving him food and drink. So whose money is used to provide that food and drink? Is it the money of the son or is it the money of the father? Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says Mishel Ben. It's from the money of the son. The son has to use his own funds in order to feed and 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 give to drink to his father. Rav Nasan Baroshi, Amar Mishel Av. Rav Nasan Baroshi says he uses the father's money. The son has to do the work of giving the food and the drink to his father, but he doesn't have to use his own funds for that purpose. Orulei Rabbanon Rav Yirmiya. The Rabbanon they instructed Rav Yirmiya. V'yamri lo livreid Rav Yirmiya. Some have the version that they instructed the son of Rav Yirmiya, Commando Amar Mishel Av, that we follow the opinion that you use the money from the father. And the Gemara says, Meisve, we have a question from the following Brisa. Nemar, it says in the Pasuk, Kabedesavichoviasimecha. It says, You should honor your father and your mother. Venamar, it also says in the Pasuk, Kabedesashem et mehonecha. It says, You should honor Hashem, mehonecha, from your own money, from your own wealth. That's a Pasuk in Mishlei. And so the Gemara says, Malahalan bechestron kis, just, just like over there, when you're honoring Hashem, you lose money, you use your own money. Afkan bechestron kis, so to over here, by the honoring of your father and your mother, you have to use your own money. V'yamrit mishalav, so if you're going to say that you're using the father's money, my nafkale mine, so what's the chesron kis? Why is, there any, why is there any loss of money to the son in honoring the father or the mother? And the Gemara says, no, it could be levital malacha, it could be the reference over here is that you don't have to actually use your own money, but when you're serving your father or your mother, so there's bitl malacha, you're not able to do other work, and therefore you're not able to make money in the other work that you could have done, and it could be that's what it means in the Brai, so when it says afkan bechisar and kiss, so too over here you have to honor your father and your mother with a loss of money, it doesn't mean that you're using your own money to give them food and drink, it just means that you're losing money in the sense that there's bitl malacha, you're not able to work while you're serving your father and your mother. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come and hear the following proof. The Brisa says, Beis Achim, let's say you have two brothers, or Shnei Shutfin, or let's say two partners, or Ha'avu Beno, or Rav Talmido, or let's say the father and his son, or the Rebbe and his Talmud, Poden Zeh Lozeh Meiser Sheni. So first they can redeem for one another Meiser Sheni. The halach is that if you redeem your own Meiser Sheni, you have to add a fifth. But if you redeem someone else's Meiser Sheni, so then you don't have to add a fifth. So one way you can get around the fifth is if you redeem for somebody else and they can use, they can employ that over here the two brothers, the two partners, etc. One can redeem for the other. And then it also says in the Brai, so, Also, they can give to one another Meiser Ani. Let's say one of them is poor and the other one has Meiser Ani to give. So he can give that Meiser Ani to the other individual. So let's say the son can give the Meiser Ani to the father. And the Gemara says, V'yamrit Mishal Bein. Now, if you say that the son has to use his own money in order to provide food for the father, Nimza Zeb Porea Chovo Mishal Anim, don't we find that this individual, meaning this son, is paying off his debt? He has a debt from his own money. He's supposed to pay his debt to the father. He's supposed to use his own money to give food to the father. And now instead, he's using the money that's supposed to belong to the poor, and he's using that to pay his personal debt. And the Gemara says, Lo no tzrich, it's necessary lahadafa. We're talking over here where the son has already given, he's already provided to his father enough food. And now lahadafa, we're talking about extra surplus. He wants to provide a little bit extra. So he's already fulfilled his own obligation in terms of giving the money to give food to his father. For the surplus, if his father is poor, he can give that maiserani to his father. But the Gemara says, Yachi, if so, Hainu de Katani Allah. So, how do we explain what was taught on this Brisa? It says, Amr of Yehuda, of Yehuda says, Tavu me'eru lemisha machilas aviv, Maiserani. It says that a curse should come on a person who gives his father the Maiserani. Ve'il hadafa, now if all he's giving is surplus to the father, my nafkamina, what difference does it make? What's so bad about giving Maiserani to the father if we're talking about surplus? The son's already fulfilled his basic obligation of honoring his father. And the Gemara says, Afi lo'achi, nevertheless, Zila be mil, so this is something that is disgraceful to give my surani to the father, it's not a nice thing. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come in here, the following proof, Shalos Rabbi Eliezer, they asked Rabbi Eliezer the following question, Ad heichon kibar avoim, to what extent is kibar avoim? Amr Lemi said to them, Kadesh yitol arnaki v'yizrukenu liyam v'fanav, even if, let's say, he would take a purse, a purse of money and throw it into the sea in front of the sun, he's not supposed to shame him, he's not supposed to embarrass him. And so the Gemara says, mishalav. Now if you say that the honoring of one's father, the money, the funds come from the father, so that means we must be talking here where the arniki, the, the wallet that's being thrown into the sea, actually belongs to the father. So my so if that's the case, what does the son care? Of course the son 
son is not going to shame the father. It's not even his own money that's being thrown into the sea. And the Gemara says, no, but Roy Liyarsha, the case is that the son is set to inherit the father, so he could get upset that you're throwing away my inheritance and he has to honor his father. He can't get upset at him. And the Gemara says, It's like the incident with Rabba by Ravuna. Because Ravuna, he tore up some silk, some expensive fabric in front of Rabba, his son. Amar, he said, I want to see I want to see if he becomes angry or if he doesn't become angry. The Gemara says, but still, how could he have done that? Maybe he will become angry. And then what's happening is, he's placing a stumbling block in front of his son. And Rav Huna is being over, he's transgressing the, the, the Pasuk of Lifnei Iver, Losit and Michshol. And the Gemara continues, that's not a problem of placing a stumbling block in front of his son, because the case was that Rav Huna forgave his honor before this all happened, and therefore even if it would turn out that Rabbah would become angry, there would be no violation of halacha. But the Gemara still says, but wasn't he transgressing Baal Tashchis? It says you're not allowed to destroy something. And here Rav Huna is destroying his clothing. And the Gemara says, what he did was he tore it at the seam, so he wasn't really destroying anything. But the Gemara says, But if that's the case, maybe that's the reason Rabbah didn't get angry. You're not testing Rabbah at all if you're tearing it on the seams. And the Gemara says, What he did was, he did it while Rabbah was already angry about something else. He would not have noticed that detail, so it was an effective way to test Rabbah his son. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Masni le Rav Yecheskel lo Rami berei Rav Yecheskel taught to Rami his son. Hanisurafim baniskolim. Let's say you have people who are chayiv misa, they're chayiv to be burned, and they get mixed up with people who are chayiv to be stoned. You now don't know who's chayiv to be stoned and who is chayiv to be burned. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says you don't know beskila. Everyone should get skila. Shasreifa chamur because the punishment of sreif of being burned is more strict, and we have to deal leniently with the group. Amar lay Rav Yehuda Berei. So Rav Yehuda, his son, said to him, this is Rav Yehuda, the son of Rav Yecheskel, said to Rav Yecheskel, Abba, father, lo tisni don't learn it like that. Because my area streifa chamur, because if the case is nisrofim bin iskolim, if the case is that you have a minority who are supposed to get burned and they get mixed up with a majority who are supposed to get stoned, so my area streifa chamur, why do you have to say the reason why everyone should get stoned is because burning is more stringent? Tepuk li, deruba niskolim, then we just say simply the majority in this mixture are supposed to be stoned and so everybody has to be stoned Ella rather here's how you really should teach the halacha the case is let's say those who are supposed to be stoned they get mixed up with those who are supposed to be burned the ones who are supposed to be burned are actually the majority and so therefore we're saying a chiddish even though the minority are supposed to be stoned everyone gets stoned because that is more lenient Amar Leh, so the father said back, he said to him, Yehachi, if so, Eima Seifa, let's look at the end of the very same Mishnah. The Mishnah continues, Vachachamim Omer, and the Chachamim say, Yidonu Bisreifa, that, every, that everyone should get Sreifa. Shahaskilah Chamur, because it's actually stoning, which is more stringent. Now, Mayiria, the Skilah Chamur, now if you are correct that the way you should understand the Mishnah is that the Mishnah is saying the minority are actually Niskalim, so why do you have to say that Skilah is more strict and that's why everybody gets Sreifa? Tepukli, the Ruben Nisrafim, then we should just say that since the majority are supposed to be burned, that's why everyone should get burned according to the Chachamim. Amar Leh, so he said back to him, Hasam over there, when it comes to the end of the Mishnah, Rabbanan hu deko amru leilu Rabbi Shimon. The Rabbanan are simply responding to Rabbi Shimon's premise. Deko amru, tzreifa chamura, that which you're saying that tzreifa is more stringent. Lo, no, that's not true. Skila chamura, skila is actually more stringent. And so again, Rabbi Yehuda argued to his father that the proper text of the Mishnah is Haniskolim bin Nisrafim, that the majority were supposed to get Sreifa. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Shmuel Rav Yehuda. So Shmuel said to Rav Yehuda, Shinina, big toothed one, that was a name for Rav Yehuda. Lo teimulei lo avachachi. You shouldn't speak to your father in this manner when you're arguing with your father. The Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa, Haresha Yaaviv over al divrei Torah. Let's say his father is transgressing the words of the Torah. Al Yomar lo, he shouldn't say to him, Abba vart al divrei Torah. Father, you've transgressed the Torah. El Omar lo, rather he should say to him, Abba kach kosev Torah. Father, so it's written in the Torah. But the Gemara still says, Kach Kosev You should tell your father, this is what, the, what's written in the Torah. Siura Kometzarle, that's also going to distress the father. El Omer Lo, rather he should say it to him as follows, Abba, father, Mikra Kosev Torah Kach. There is a Pasuk in the Torah that says as follows, and then the father will figure out on his own what he has done incorrectly. 
And the Gemara continues, Elazar ben Masya Omer, Elazar ben Masya says, Abba Omer Hashkeni Mayim, let's say father says, give me water to drink. U mitzvah lasos, but there's another mitzvah that needs to be done. I'm going to leave aside honoring my father and instead I'll do the mitzvah. Because both myself and my father are chayav to do the mitzvah. Isi ben Yehuda Omer, Isi ben Yehuda says, If the mitzvah can be taken care of by others, it's better that it be taken care of by others. And he should go and honor his father. Amr of Masner of Masna says, Halachik Isi ben Yehuda. The Halach is like Isi ben Yehuda. Amr of Yitzchak Bar Sheila, Amr of Masna, Amr of Chister. Rav Yitzchak Bar Sheila says, the Rav Masna says, the Rav Chista says, Ha'av shemachal al kavodo, kavodo machal. If a father forgives his honor, that is effective, the honor is forgiven. Ha'rav shemachal al kavodo. However, if a Rebbe forgives his honor, ain kavodo machal, he's not able to be mochal on his covet. Rav Yosef, Amr Rav Yosef says, Afilo ha'rav shemachal al kavodo, kavodo machal. Even if a Rebbe forgives his covet, that is effective, and the obligation to, to give him honor is now forgiven. Shenemar, as it says, Hashem holich lefnehem yomam. It says that Hashem went before Klal Yisrael during the day, so essentially Hashem forgave his honor, so to speak, and therefore a Rav is also able to forgive his honor. Amar Rav, Rav says, Hachi Hashta, what kind of comparison is it between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and a, and a Rav? Hasam HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Alma Dilehu, V'Torah Dilehi. When it comes there to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so the world is his and the Torah is his, Machal Yikre, so he's able to forgive his honor. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Lamid Beis, Amid Beis.